WWDC is right around the corner. And with that means we are getting iPadOS 18. And I have a huge list of things I would like to see. Now, just up front, these are not leaks. I don't know anything. Uh, these are more wish list items from somebody that works off the platforms, specifically more of a roadmap to the direction of which iPadOS should go. This video is sponsored by Bassius. Let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is background task. And what I mean by that is being able to close an app or move to another stage or take an app out of split view or something like that and still have things happening in the background. So for example, uh, if you're using Final Cut Pro for the iPad, you literally get a dialog box that says, do not close this app. Please leave the app open in the foreground. Uh, while you're exporting video. And that's kind of a bummer because that means while my iPad is exporting video, I can't go and do something else. Same with like uploading a video to YouTube or uploading any files to the web at all. You have to leave Safari open in order for that to happen or it'll just cancel out in the background. There's really no reason why, especially on the iPad Pros and the iPad Airs, which have the same chipset as the Mac, and the same amount of RAM as the Mac that can't handle background tasks. Now I can see obviously a case for older iPads not being able to do that because you know, not enough RAM, not enough processing power. Yes, like much older iPads, but the iPad Pro line, especially the modern iPad Pro line and the modern iPad Air line should be able to handle that. Next up is one that I have been asking for a very long time, and I'm honestly just gonna keep repeating myself until it happens, but it's Time Machine. Time Machine needs to come to the iPad. Right now, the only way to back up your device is to iCloud. And for that to happen, your iPad has to be locked and plugged into power, which is not something that I do very often. I usually am charging my iPad when I'm working at it. So I often get the notification that, oh, your device hasn't been backed up in two weeks and I have to manually go in and back it up. That is not good, especially for somebody that works off the iPad. If my iPad was to get stolen, broken, whatever, that would not be good. I would lose a lot of work. So the ability to have Time Machine to back up to either an external drive or a network drive or a NAS or something like that would be really killer. I want this so badly. And again, I'm just going to repeat keep repeating myself until we get it. And this one is kind of ridiculous that we don't already have this, is a clipboard manager. A clipboard manager is just essential to working off of a computer now. It just makes your life so much easier. So for those that don't know, a clipboard manager basically means anytime you copy something, it saves it to an app, a service, a folder, whatever. It saves it somewhere so you can call that back later on. So if you're copying a whole bunch of stuff and you're like, oh, I need that thing I copied like three things ago you can go into the clipboard manager and pull that up. The iPad desperately needs that. Whether it is a built-in system feature for a clipboard manager, or whether it's an API that allows developers to make a third-party clipboard manager. And either way would work. I could see it being nice either way. I could see why Apple hasn't done it for security reasons. You don't want to be copying your bank password and it get uploaded to a really scammy app and that scammy app now has your bank credentials. But that's where an API could come in or Apple just doing it themselves could come in. Um, you can also do things where it's like, okay, your stuff from a password manager or the passwords feature in settings, that stuff doesn't get added to the clipboard manager. But if I'm copying something out of Obsidian or notes or reminders or whatever, that stuff can obviously get added to a clipboard manager. This video is sponsored by Bassius. This is the Bassius Eli Open Ear TWS Earbuds. These are open ear headphones perfect for going on runs or just being active outside. What's great about these is since they are open ear, you can hear things like oncoming traffic, bicyclists, or somebody just talking to you. They're also directional, so there's no sound leak protecting your privacy if you're on a call in public. They have really good sound quality, and the open ear design makes them really comfortable to wear for a long period of time. They just hook onto your ear. Nothing goes inside your ear. One of my favorite features is that they support pairing up to two devices. I've been using these with my Nintendo Switch at night while I play games on the couch. 
They come in fluorescent green, white, and black options. It comes with an optional lanyard. They are IPX4 waterproof, get seven and a half hours of battery life on a single charge, and then have 30 hours of battery life with the case. I'm gonna put some links in the description below to where you can go check these out. My thanks to Bassius for sponsoring this video. Next, we just need some kind of sign of life for shortcuts. I realized the other day, come September, I used to always do a what's new in shortcuts video, but I actually haven't done that the last couple of years because there hasn't been anything new. There hasn't been anything interesting. I mean, the only new stuff that's been added is just bugs. I haven't been making a lot of shortcuts videos because there hasn't been new interesting actions to do anything with. Uh, I've been relying on a lot of third-party apps to do interesting things with shortcuts. There really hasn't been any first-party interesting action since the uh, what's on my device action. And even that one is so buggy, it really only works with Safari. So yes, some kind of sign of life, some interesting actions for shortcuts, please. Stage Manager is a big way that I interact with my iPad and a lot of people interact with their iPad. This gives you the ability to do windowing and have four apps up on your screen at a time, but it needs some improvements. It was introduced two years ago and it got some improvements last year. So it gives me hope that we could see some improvements again this year. Uh, the big one, just right off the bat, lose the four app window limit. Uh, it's dumb. There's no reason for it. These iPad Pros, iPad Airs, the modern ones, they're on the same chip as the Mac. My iPad that I have right here has 16 gigs of RAM in it. It can handle more than four windows. It just, just get rid of it. It's dumb. Then there should be an ability to set the way you open an app. So right now, if you were just to tap on an app, it opens into a new stage, or if that app was already in another stage, it'll jump back to that stage. There should be a setting that allows you to just open an app in your current stage. So if I tap on an app, it just opens. Kind of like how if you shift click on an app right now, it'll open into your current stage. But just be, give me a setting to make that the default. Then there is the dreaded keyboard bar. This is the bar down at the bottom when you are typing with a hardware keyboard. It has the, the keyboard icon in the left. There's the dictation button on the right. There's nothing in this keyboard bar that you can't do from the hardware keyboard, that there isn't a keyboard shortcut for or something. I don't know why it's still here. In a lot of apps, it just covers up UI that you can't get to when that is open. It's not a good feature. Yes, you can technically turn it off, but it actually turns off a bunch of other stuff that's really handy as well, so I don't like to turn it off, but that bar just gets in the way, especially in Stage Manager, so it should just go away. Then jumping back to shortcuts, there should be actions for Stage Manager, the ability to build like template stages, like give me the ability to say, I wanna add things, Fantastical, Obsidian, and Mail to a stage, and then run that shortcut and all of those apps just open and we take it a step further. Let me uh, set up like the window size and position and stuff like that. This is stuff you can actually do on the Mac, but for some reason it's just never come to the iPad. It's really a shame that there isn't a way to do that. There needs to be an API for developers because right now developers can't tell if their app is in Stage Manager or not. But if there was an API for that, then they could donate, you know, shortcut actions and stuff like that for window position and stuff like that. That would be killer. Then also a personal automation for detecting when a keyboard is attached. So my thought process is right now, you have to manually turn on and off Stage Manager. But what would be really nice is, oh, hey, if a keyboard is attached, turn on Stage Manager. If a keyboard's not attached, turn it off. Uh, yes, you could do this through Bluetooth personal automations if you're just using a Bluetooth keyboard, but that doesn't work for something like the Magic Keyboard or like my army of mechanical keyboards that are mostly wired. Then piggybacking off Stage Manager, better external monitor support. So this would be uh, clamshell mode. I 
would like to just be able to close up my iPad, put it to the side and just work from an external monitor. I'm not a big multi-monitor person. I just usually prefer to have one screen I'm working at. Plus I have like a, a I have the studio display. It's a 27 inch 5K monitor. I don't, I don't really need a, a, another 13 inch display as well. If they were to bring clamshell mode to the iPad and external monitor, they would need to add a few extra things like the ability to get to notification center and control center from the external monitor. Uh, widgets and apps, on the external monitor, that kind of stuff. On external monitor support, there needs to be a way to set wallpapers independently. So right now what it does is if you are um, using your iPad and you plug it into external monitor, it just takes the wallpaper from your iPad and puts it on the external monitor. But because they're different aspect ratios, it just blows up the four by three image. So it looks kind of terrible on an external monitor because you're not able to position it correctly. Something else I think the iPad OS could benefit from, especially when you have a keyboard and trackpad attached, is a menu bar, just like the Mac. There kind of is a menu bar already. If you hold down the command key while in an app, it'll show a list of all the keyboard shortcuts there, and it'll break it up into categories. So there's kind of sort of a menu bar here. You could tap on those and jump between them and stuff like that. So take that, put a menu bar on the iPad, and that would actually be a really nice feature. Since WWDC is a developer conference, I would be, um, well, I'd be missing the mark if I didn't say Xcode. Xcode is Apple's developer application tool. This is where um, all developers write apps for the iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Mac, you name it. It's an Apple platform. That's where you write the app for. Right now, the iPad does have Swift Playgrounds, but Swift Playgrounds is extremely limited. First off, it's limited just to Swift, and there's a whole bunch of APIs and features missing. Like, from what I understand, the last time I checked in on it, you couldn't even do in-app purchases as a, de as a developer in your app, and it's important for developers to be able to make money from their apps to justify spending their time working on it. So yeah, like that would probably be an important feature. Speaking of apps the iPad needs, it really also needs passwords to be a, uh, its own app, pull it out of settings, let it be its own app, a full preview app. So right now, Preview is kind of in iPad OS. If you go into files and open up a PDF document or something like that, it's kind of there, but we really need the full preview app and font book. Apple tried to make fonts work in an interesting way. It never took off. Just give us font book, the ability to drag font files in there and just use them throughout the system. I don't really wanna keep creating profiles every time I have to add a font to my iPad. Something I would personally like and I don't think it'll happen because it's very niche, but universal control between multiple iPads. So I have my iPad Pro and iPad mini, and I use these devices together a lot. I would love the ability, just like how their Mac and the iPad have it, to be able to use the keyboard and trackpad from my iPad Pro and move the cursor over to my iPad mini and control things on the iPad mini. Uh, use the keyboard to type on the iPad mini, then go back to my iPad Pro. That would be killer. Oh, it'd be so nice. Then the next feature is going to surprise a few people. The ability to enable Mac continuity from the iPad. This is basically the thing where you are able to control your Mac so you get your the Mac's display on your iPad and you're able to control what's happening on your Mac from your iPad. Uh, some of you might have seen the news that I just launched a new podcast, Comfort Zone. It's hosted by uh, Mac Stories. I'm joined by Matt Birchler and my friend Neilion. We're really excited about this show. You should go check it out. It's got a really interesting premise. But because we're doing a video portion of that as well, I can't use my iPad, uh, which is going to get into my next thing. Uh, so I had to go out and I bought the base, base M2 Mac Mini 256 gigs of storage, eight gigs of RAM. I bought that. Literally, it is mounted right here underneath this desk. It has no monitor plugged into it at all. I use the iPad as the monitor. Um, I have this cable right here that uh, has a capture card attached to it and I plug it in, but I would love to just be able to initiate continuity right from the iPad and, and just control it that way. And speaking of the podcast, 
the audio engine on the iPad really needs to be updated. That is the biggest issue for a lot of podcasters that are keeping them from being able to work from the iPad. Uh, but also just in general, the fact that it can only do one audio stream at a time is kind of hilarious, but also really sad. Uh, so what I mean by this is I need to be able to have a call with the people I'm you know, on the podcast with and be able to record my local microphone at the same time. Uh, and, and now also have a video call as well. And you just can't do that on the iPad. I looked at a bunch of different services. I wasn't happy with any of them that would work with the iPad. If this was just an audio podcast, I have some pretty niche and specific hardware in order to do that. But as soon as I added the video component, that made it a lot harder. Then there's the files app. Um, I don't mind the Files app. I know a lot of people hate it and are like, I can't work from the iPad because it's not Finder. I don't hate it, but I also have seen it grow a lot over the last few years, but there are still a ton of bugs in it. Uh, it needs better background transferring, background task support, like I mentioned at the beginning. The ability to pin files uh, from iCloud, that was a feature that was announced like an iPad OS 13 or 14, and then it was pulled out in the beta and was never seen again. Don't know why, uh, but that's actually something I would really like because a lot of times iCloud can get a bit aggressive about removing files locally and then just sitting in the cloud. So I have to re-download them all the time, which can get annoying. But then for files that support, there's stuff like tab support where it'd be really nice. Like a finder feature I love is the ability to just hit command T and just about any app and open up a new tab in that same window. So that way you're not cluttering up your space, but you can get to multiple documents or files or windows or whatever. And then just better support for sharing files and folders. Um, I, I, since I've been working on this podcast, I've been sharing a lot of files and folders with other people. And the iCloud stuff, it's a little clunky. Um, basically, you share root folders. You don't share individual subfolders. It's just this whole mess and just needs to be cleaned up a bit. Now, one thing you didn't hear me say is, oh, just put macOS on the iPad. I actually don't want Mac OS on the iPad, despite what everyone else wants. I want the iPad to be its own thing. I want the iPad to succeed. But there's a but. <laughs> if the iPad isn't going to grow up, if the iPad isn't going to get pro features, pro apps, you know, desktop class apps, like these things that it really needs to be its true standalone self, like, you know, like I mentioned, I had to go and buy a Mac mini just to do a podcast. If it's not going to be able to get those features, then yeah, just put Mac OS on the iPad. It can even be just like, it only works when you have a keyboard and trackpad attached. That way they don't have to worry about like touch targets and stuff like that in Mac OS. But ultimately, I don't want Mac OS to be on the iPad. I want iPad OS to be its own thing, its own grown up thing. We'll see if that happens. So that's what I'm hoping for at WWDC this year. My thanks to Bassius for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.